the MMA Roadshow, episode number 279. My name is John Morgan, and for the first time in a month... In 600 years. Cold Coffee is with me. We are here at the Casa de Cold Coffee yeah, in Las say, Vegas. I should say you're with me now. <laughs> <laughs> you're back here. Ah, that is you're back true. here at the homestead. That is true. I have I have left Fight Island. I have made my way back home. Yeah. Abu Dhabi is in the rearview mirror. My, my temporary... Home away from home for three yeah. weeks is gone, and now back at the expansive grounds yeah, of the Cosmic Coffee. Yeah, it feels very similar, right? When you, when you look out the oh, window and you, just like you it. see the, the trees and the water. I mean, you think about it. If you, saw mean, that, <laughs> if you saw that picture that I took outside of my balcony, there was a, there was a pool right there. There were beautiful palm trees. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm kind of looking at the same thing right here. There's a beautiful pool right here. I'm seeing I mean, there's luscious no jet palm skis. trees. I, yeah. I, I put the jet skis <laughs> in the garage. You know. Ah, listen, I mean, you know, <laughs> we got work to do. And if the jet Did skis you see any there, wildlife? On the jet skis? Uh, not any wildlife. I mean, we rode into a dust storm, which was awesome. Like, like uh, the, that was over the water. Oh yeah, it came out over the water, That's and so we crazy. saw, and we were just like just blasted through it, and it was really funny because like, so did uh, you get dirty from it? Oh yeah, we were just grimy. That's but it was, crazy. Oh, it was yeah. Was the, those were saying the, the funny thing about a dust storm is like there's a lot of dust in it. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. it was all in your eyes and everything. And the uh, the the funny part was uh, the the. You know, there was. They basically came out and got us. They like because it, it didn't dissipate. It like, was me. No, oh, dude, we were in the middle of this. It was like it was like some Twilight Zone stuff. Like all of a sudden, so the like sun once disappeared. Once it came over, that was it. It was. It just stayed. It was crazy. That's kind of. If that's I mean, it would have. It would have gone through. It would have yeah. gone through eventually, but it, it took a little while. But it was funny because me and Oscar Willis and Scott Peterson, we were on our jet skis and we stopped and we we're like, "Bro, what about that that dust storm over there?" And I was like. Let's go into it. Oh, so and you I, actually aimed to it? It wasn't yeah, like yeah, it yeah. came to you? No. So I'm sure the dudes on the beach were like, oh, they're sitting there talking. like people. They're definitely coming back. And then we were like, nope, onward we go. And <laughs> and we went right into the middle of it. And after a few minutes, like we hear another jet ski coming up. And they're like, hey, dummies. Yeah, like you're not here. supposed to drive. Because I wouldn't even think about that. Because if that was something that's like a normal um, – because depending – I mean, I'm not a – uh, an expert on the intakes of like a, a jet ski, but you know, moving parts and with the intakes and bringing uh, air into the engine and other stuff, that's got to be oh, absolutely horrible that's to a have dust storms for it. So I would think Boy, that most of them, if that happened, that. that they would just like, <laughs> it's time to park the jet skis. You're but so since right. you guys have like the full run of like the place, they're probably like, whatever, let them do whatever. But they were probably like, these idiots. We should probably tell them to come in. Oh, yeah. They came in, guys. I didn't even think, God, you know, now that I think about it in retrospect, I thought they were just worried about, like, our safety. They were worried, about, probably the, worried about the, the gear. safety. <laughs> but if you could, but if, but if visibility it. was bad, they probably were legit worried that you guys would crash like, in. Like, hit each other, other yeah. or hit the sand, or hit whatever. Yeah, yeah. Didn't see any wildlife. They did say that there's, like, uh, in fact, I, I learned this while here, Abu Dhabi translates to father of gazelles. And I guess they have like the largest gazelle uh, preservatory. Not preservatory. That's not the right word, is it? Right where they uh, where, where they basically yeah. br- had a breeding program or whatever they have wow. out there. So the guy was saying, I mean, we we know but the I whole. I guess that's more on the mainland. Yeah, somewhere. yeah, definitely not in the in the on Yaz Island, Island, especially not in the bubble we were. But yeah, the guy was saying he's like, man, once the and again, I mean, not, nobody was. They, I mean. It's been clear since day one. They viewed this as a, a, a PR move, but oh, yeah. um, the 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 director of marketing uh, for the tourism committee, who went to college at Colorado State, by the way, Interesting. yeah, he uh, he actually came and told like he was kind of gave is us a little speech or, or whatever. Just, I'm yeah. not sure. I'm not sure what his background is. I mean, he's he's not like in a you know born. I mean, maybe he was born here. I don't know, but he definitely has yeah. some cultural heritage over there. But uh, but he was saying that like. Um, that, that you can come over. They have like a, they have like a breeding program for sea turtles, and they have like all these like preserved little areas. They said so if you, you if you can ever come back when it's the uh, you know non pandemic times, man, you can come see like all these like wildlife sanctuaries, That's basically. Cool. Yeah. So so I didn't see any real Very wildlife, cool. but. I don't uh, know why it just popped my head. There. It would have been kind of neat for you to be there, especially jet skiing, to like see some sort of like. Marine animals nah, or just, something. Just, 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 just dust storm. Just a dust storm that <laughs> we rode in the middle of. <laughs> so funny, Straight man. Straight Raiders of the Lost Ark. I really shit. thought they were worried about us. And now that, I'm now, sure they I love were. The, I love that cold coffee brings it <laughs> home. Be like, nah, bro. They weren't worried about you. They were, they were worried about their machines. That's awesome, man. Well, I mean, it's, yeah. yeah. Well, who knows? I did love I, I the, the car stuff that you guys did. Yeah. I guarantee you that's the kind of thing. Like, if a dust storm would come over the island. I guarantee they're parking all those those fancy fancy cars. Those drivers were good. Every they're video really good. that I've seen 
Like those guys are like legit. So was there an option for you guys to even drive yourself? No. Or it was always so just you, ride can, along? you can, but that requires like uh, some education, some yeah. training. So they do have that option available there, but so they just figured like for, they class? just figured to like get people. So still like hours, you could still take like an hour and then like yeah, drive oh, yeah, all those yeah, cars? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but since dope. since they were since uh, the way everything was set up, they figured the the way to do it was just to do it uh, that way. They call yeah. it a hot lap, or they drive you. We actually ended up hanging out with one of the drivers, uh, Andy Crabtree. He was a, he's a, a a cool cat, man. We ended up having beers with him. Go take more laps. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> we 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 hang out afterwards. Like, bro, show me how good you can drift on a twelve. Pack. Oh, we spent a cu- after we met him the first night. We ended up hanging out a couple nights. It was it was funny to hear his stories because he had stories of like yeah. all the other teams and everybody that was there. Oh, so okay. we got to hear the background of like. Who who was brave? Who was not so brave? Who was you know cool. who enjoyed it more than us? It was fun. No, the, the car stuff was fun. Those uh, those drivers are really really good. He, in, for instance, he grew up racing his whole life. He's been racing cars since he was a little kid, and so you wow. know now he does this, and um, you know it's kind of seasonal work. Like they'll go to Is another he from track. There? He lives there, but he's originally from from England. So. Uh, but he kind of he said he kind of bounces around a little bit. Like he'll go to another area. But so his job is to go and just drive people around. That's it. But dude, think about it. Like but think about thing. this, man. He's in that car for like six hours straight. It is so I cannot explain to you how hot it is. Yeah. Like you get in. So we we showed up to do the car thing, and it was me, uh, Oscar Willis, uh, Guillermo Cruz, and uh, another Brazilian named Luis. And I'm not I'm not sure who he works for. I think he worked for like a Brazilian outlet. So we had, we had groups, right? And we showed up second on the night uh, that we went. So the first group was uh, uh, who was there? Um, Scott Peterson was there. Um, uh, the Schmo, Helen Yi. Um, I'm trying to think who else was there. I think one of the local journalists was there. But anyway, so did they make the same driver take turns giving them a ride? No, so there's multiple drivers. There's multiple drivers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got you. Did there? Well done, sir. Well done. Nice little inside media joke there. A couple people will get that. Um, so, uh, no, so we show up and we're like, yeah, man, this is going to be awesome. And it was funny because myself and, well, really just myself was yeah. like, I wonder if I should have a couple beers before I go do this, you know? Yeah. And uh, fortunately I did not because that would have been a horrible decision. But we walk in and the other group is standing around like waiting to leave. And they're, I mean, they're literally like drenched. I'm like, yeah. like soaked head to toe. I'm like, did they like jump in a pool or something like what's going on and then i started looking around and like on the ground in the garage there's like pools of water wow on the ground in the garage getting through the cars it is so hot so for those drivers to be in those cars for you know four or five hours straight because i think it started at like six and wrapped up around 10 or 11 um, because they don't do it during the day it'd obviously be way too hot but even at night it was so hot and then and then also just the mental focus of that man like because because they're trying to make it fun so they're trying to like I mean, they're not going crazy, but they're trying to yeah. push it a little bit to give you that experience. Sure. And uh, um, especially the uh, the Caterham, I believe it's called, the, which is the open wheel, like old school car that really like drifts in the turns. Okay. Like that one, you got to really focus on like how you drive it. Um, the Aston Martin was just like pure power, like speed. So, no, nah, it was awesome. fun, man. The whole trip That's was cool. good. I mean, uh, you know, it's uh, it was unique. Now, going back – is not going to be, I don't think, as exciting because it's not all new and you're not trying to right. figure it all out. Uh, um, but I'm sure we're going back in September. But I'll say this, man, the, er, everything there, the facilities were great. It's just, you know, uh, as I think myself and Oscar talked about on the uh, and a half this, this past weekend as we wrapped up, um, it's just the timing is tough. For I mean, for everybody, the fighters, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of talk, 30-foot cage versus 25-foot cage. What, what produces more? Man, I just think, honestly, more than anything, it's just, it be trying to be awake in the middle of the night. Like I, I think it was difficult for the fighters yeah. to kind of get that whole routine down, get yeah. that schedule down. I mean, it's one thing, and you hear people talk about, oh, well, you know, I switched to third shift. You know, it's one thing I think to just hope that your brain fires at at the highest level. You know, switching to a complete opposite, but to to have your physicality, to have the physical side. I know some people. I, I can't remember what fighter. One of the fighters remarked and was like, dude, once the adrenaline gets going, it's a fight to fight. I'm sure I'll be able to do it. And I wish I could remember who it was so we could always go back to him and be like, so what did you really mm, think afterwards? Looked pretty you flat know? in that first round, yeah, bro. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, yeah, I can only imagine the difficulties um, of of trying to switch completely and then I'm operate at a high thing. And, and high again, n- not having the crowd there, right? Like, uh, yeah. you know, of course. To amp uh, you up a little bit. As you said, it's a cage fight, man. Yeah. Like, you know, when you got guys like Cowboy Cerrone, who's been doing it forever, who we all think is the anybody, anywhere, anytime guy that tells yeah. you, 
I get nervous before every fight. Yeah. I say I'm never going to do this again. So I think you get some of that adrenaline. I think you get. So I don't think that's unavoidable. But like you said, man, when you're, it's the middle of the night. It's you, you, you know, there's no crowd at all to like give you that extra level of being on point as you yeah. walk in. I mean, like, how did you get ready to get that first question oh, without wow. being ready? You know, I mean, how, you, how did you psych yourself up? It's, you know, a lot of lot of hard work, a lot of dedication. <laughs> Uh, I'd like, like to thank my coaches. <laughs> uh, they really, they really, it's not, it's not I, it's we. You know I what mean, I mean? It sounded like you were ready to go when that first question <laughs> dropped. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you, bro. I appreciate that, man. It, you got to deliver under difficult circumstances, man. That's what we do. It was so. It was. It was kind of interesting, like being so opposite. Uh, so like, especially events. Like we were lucky here in the states. So like, when the events happened, it was like, okay, we could watch it like a normal time. But in normal day to day interactions, not being able to like sort of talk with like people on the ground, where normally, if you being the the remote person, it's all about the communication. So you make sure that the handoff like happens. Yeah. But that was that was a little weird with it being so sort of opposite on this particular one. But it worked out. It worked out. So. It was but, a good experience, man. Yeah. But I'm I'm glad to be back. I'm uh I'm on furlough this week, so that kind of sucks. You know, I've been kind of obviously we've talked about that, been open about that. Uh, sucks because that extra money's gone. And that's what really sucks, man. That 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 extra you know six hundred dollars from the CARES Act uh, has, has expired, and and that was a huge help to us, you yeah. know, for all these weeks because we've been doing these furloughs since back in April, and we we still got to go through September basically. And yep. uh, man, that that extra six hundred dollars a week was a huge help to just keeping us kind of. You know, life is normal to as, yeah. as much as possible, but uh, but uh, not, yeah, not I was so expecting, much anymore. I was expecting that last one, and when I was like, "Oh, I got the one," I was like, "Wait, where's the the other email that says like it deposited six hundred? I was like, "No," but I'm underneath the date. And then you know, because it, it's like it's not July thirty first, and I went and go and you look at the the website, and it's like. No, it's the week prior right. to it. And I was like, oh, you damn politicians. Like, just make it be what it is. I know, If you man. say it's going to be the 31st, make it be the 31st. And don't it's, make it be, and look, be man, it, you know. It's weird because I'm not – I I don't want to be a, hey, man, I got my hand out. Come on, government, help me out. But it's like, bro, I would work. Like, <laughs> trust me, man, I would work. Yeah. You know, if I had the option, I'd work. So, yeah. uh, I mean, it definitely was better than nothing. But, yeah, it's it sucks. So, yeah, it sucked to be on furlough last week. But, yeah, now I just know that my next paycheck is going to be half off as well. And it's like – Brutal. Booty. Brutal. Booty. I, I, uh, Especially I, I will when we're getting into the busiest month – of the year that's not how we want to start like this month i was telling uh it's funny i was i you know uh i'm not a big like snapchat person but right. for some reason my nieces and nephews love it so like i talked to my nieces and nephews and my uh niece was like so how's work going i was like let me tell you about august i was like <laughs> how are literally she? she's uh 20 she just okay, okay. I thought you were like telling some like eight year old or something. No, no, no. no. <laughs> well, let she, me she tell just, you about the grievances. She just, yeah, no. She just got out of high school oh, maybe okay, a year okay. or so ago. I think she just turned twenty one. Right. So she's old enough now that I don't feel like I need to like right. she can worry understand. about what I say t- so that my brother calls me up and like like what did you say to Darby? I'm like. I don't know. I just talked. I don't, you know, I, I, there's no filter for this thing that's atta- <laughs> attached to my face. Um, but it's funny, but uh, I was, t- the the whole talk of like MMA and work came up and August came up and I was like, how, you know, in a, in a time when a lot of people in their works are just so backwards and so whatever, we're literally going into the busiest UFC time I can ever remember so while we're balancing these, oh hey, you're gonna get less paid for this time, and you're gonna get less for this, but you're oh by the way, we're going into the busiest. Yeah, by time the way, we're ever. doing every Tuesday and every Saturday this month, and yep. oh by the way, we'll have a couple Bell tours in there. Hey, by the way, one championship is cranking back up yep. as well. Um, the regional shows are back up as well, which I will say, shout out to CFFC. Two weeks yeah, from now, gotta, I'll be on the mic again. I'll up. be on the mic again. Myself and CM you Punk. Know, I was gonna say, is it with CM? Yeah, yeah. Myself and CM Punk will be on the mic again. Is so. uh. Uh, I had a brain fart. Just Yeah, she's gonna be. I, I'm there? not sure. I haven't heard yet. I because okay. she's. I, I'm worried that maybe not. Just because like with the space and the limits, like I don't think we'll be doing backstage interviews. So I'm oh, not that's sure. True. So I'm not sure. I haven't heard um, one way or the other. So I'm, I'm afraid that maybe not. Maybe she's got to wait that's until good. we get you back. You and to your full boy still hanging out. Hey, me and me and Punk will get it done though. So I'm excited <laughs> about that. But you're right, it, dude. It's such a busy month, and to know that. All right, man. We're getting back to full speed. Ah, uh, but not full pay. But not, not full, full pay. pay. Not full pay. But I will say this. 
uh, to have a week off right now is not bad, like catching back yeah. up with the wife and kid and all that and good stuff. So, uh, But anyway, it's good to be back together, hanging out at the expansive grounds of the Casa de Cold Copy. Yes, take it all in. Take it all in. It's not cool. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's no Abu Dhabi, but, you know, it'll have to do. <laughs> it'll have to but we do. But we, we do have some of the heat. Like, we are actually, this week, I think at the end of this weekend, I think we're supposed to spike back up to like a 111, 112. I'm com- you know what's funny is it's miserable hot, but I don't <laughs> feel it at all. I'm yeah. good with it because after what I had to deal with over there, I'm just like, eh, it's all good. I'm sure it's no biggie at it's all. It's all good. I mean, it, it is something going outside. Like, this is the time of the year where we're always like, oh, this is the this is the mm-hmm. when you stay inside. You know, when I, when I take my long venture to take the trash out to the street, you <sighs> know. <sighs> Man, you do that for the staff sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome of yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, I give them a day off every once in a while. Wow. You know? So sometimes I'm That's like, the kind of I got employer you are, man. <laughs> Just amazing. I got this one. I got uh, this one. Frosty beverages, by the way, provided by uh, our man South Cox. I'm a big fan of his uh, of his uh, of his username, if nothing else. But by the way, he sent it I don't get way it. back on July second. I know you don't understand about the South. It's funny. Uh, <laughs> way back on July second, he said uh, it's a, it's a beer fund. He's like, it's too bad you'll have to wait a few weeks to spend it. Maybe cold coffee will help you out. Um, but I will say, I stayed patient. I I, I could have used that twenty dollars that he sent over to, for, to add to the beer fund. I said no. I'm saving this money. There you go. I'll hang it out. So thank th- you, sir. Thank you, South Cox. We appreciate you. He hit me up at Venmo.com slash John dash Morgan dash four hundred. If anybody else wants to, <laughs> I never thought this would happen, but we've had three people now send us some frosty beverage money and I appreciate I it. I like it. I appreciate it. I like it. All right, listen, uh, definitely going to talk some MMA, but I do want to say real quick, uh, sports is back. I mean, we're talking about the busiest month for for, for yeah. MMA, man. It's the busiest month for, like, like literally every sport is going on right now. It's getting back. But I got to say, man, after after what I went through in Jacksonville, after what we continue to go through in Vegas and, and yeah. what I went through on Fight Island, um, I don't know if these other sports are going to make it, bro. Like, Basketball seems to be doing the right thing. Like the NBA seems to be doing the right thing. They got the bubble. I know they had the cat that went to go get the the, the chicken wings at the say, strip club. I, I mean, was you know, say, they're having they're having some weird little exceptions. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's one thing, but I can imagine where if if you're that if you're that getting paid that much money, you have to realize you have to I guess you know sort of kid glove some of these superstars. You know, like okay, I get it. You got to go to a wedding. Okay, we're gonna give you an exemption. Right, right. Whereas. I don't see the UFC saying, "Okay, no, so and so, you you need an exemption from this fight week." Not happening. I know you got to fight on Saturday, but you have a wedding on Wednesday. But, okay, we're gonna let you go. But that's that is not gonna happen. That is the thing that the UFC, I guess, has the benefit of is they're bringing in people for like a week. You yeah. know what I mean? They're not bringing in people for two months. Now we're all kind of going through this thing for yeah. for weeks at a time. The staff at the UFC is doing this stuff for weeks at a time. I mean, everybody that was you know in Abu Dhabi obviously did like three weeks. And in fact, you know the locals that were there. They had to come in two weeks early, so they did five weeks. Boy, um, looking at the the gear, when I looked at some of the pictures, even like all the B roll, like they were looked like they were full hazmat suits. Full hazmat, man. So it's crazy. So with the, what the UFC and, and what the Abu Dhabi government went to, uh, to to make that happen was extensive. And, and like I said, I think basketball seems to be doing the right thing uh, in that they are having the bubble. And yes, they have had some weird exceptions and some weird stories. And I think what you said is right. I mean, I think people are going to be asking for little ways out. And it, and it seems like, you know, they're saying, okay, you can go, but then if you come back, you got you to gotta, uh, quarantine for 14 days or quarantine for 10 days or whatever the case may be. Um, and I think, you know, lose some pay during that time. Um, but th- that to me at least seems a little bit reasonable. Baseball I'm hearing about is is – not 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 even forcing like any kind of a bubble like they're allowing people to kind of just do what they want and but they're asking them to hey like please make sure you're doing the right thing like that ain't gonna work man like I don't I don't yeah. think baseball is gonna finish and I don't know what the plan is for football because I don't I don't think they've really had one yet but I just you you I, from I'm telling you right now whether you you know without getting political and what you think about COVID nineteen because that's a whole different story but the bottom line is we're not allowing people that test positive to compete you know yeah. uh. I don't think you can avoid getting it if you don't follow this bubble principle, man. Yeah. What's well, interesting about the even with like the NFL, uh, while they have the freedom, you know, you're seeing more and more reports coming out of Cat saying, "I'm not comfortable with this. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna sit out this season," and they're able to do so. So, I mean, I just question. I mean, I'm sure there's some incentive to actually participate. I know with the way that they have a lot of their contracts, a lot of these cats can probably skip out the year and still get a decent chunk of their money never having to sit on the field and good on them and good on the way that that's go. 
Um, but it just makes you wonder. So if that's the case, what is the incentive for players to actually play out a season if they know that they could just sit back with, in, unless they just say, "Hey, I'm tired of sitting at the house. I want to play. I want to perform. I feel if I don't perform, I'm going to get rusty. Right. I don't want to take a full year off." You know, but if they know they can get a decent amount of money and not have to do it, why would you? Maybe re- mean, rest some lingering injuries, yeah, I mean, heal some things I, I, up. I question whether we're going to have an NFL season. I do too. I, I just, with them not really, uh, I just, I don't know. Every, everything I read about the NFL, there's certainly the amount of people that want to make it happen. Yep. You know, they want to perform for their fans. They understand that their fans are, I mean, fans are watching anything and everything that's on the on the TV right now. So if you could give them what they love, one, they're going to be very appreciative of the team. But I think there is some, uh, you know, incentive for the team because I think they themselves are like, dude, I'm tired of sitting at the house. We want to get moving. But if you know that you have the freedom to do it, and eh, let's just take it a little bit off. I mean, because there is the possibility of, of catching this thing out there. More than likely, these athletes at the top form are going to be fine if they catch it to shake it off. Right. But it's the collateral damage, and I understand them to not to, to fear that part of it. You know, yes, I might be completely fit and can do a million squats of a million pounds, but if I catch something, I go home and my kid gets sick. You know, I'd feel like a pretty a pretty big jerk. So I can see where some might. So I don't know. Out of all the big major sports, out of the the handful that we have here in the U.S., NFL right now, from just seeing these these football players more and more say that they're going to take it off. I just wonder if we're going to have a season. I, th- I think there's going to be problems, man. I really do. And I, I, I just want to say that because I, 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 I just want to urge people to be cautious, man. Just because it seems like things are getting back to normal a little bit doesn't mean that they are back to normal. You know what I mean? It's 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 not 100% normal. Yep. It, it looks to me like basketball is trying to take the right steps. Baseball, to me, does not like they like. It doesn't look like they're doing much of anything at all, other than not having people in the in the crowd and te- and testing. They are testing. I should say yeah. that. I mean, I'm not trying to pretend like I'm some expert on policy, but I just I, I just know that virtual players <sighs> just actually play virtual it. stuff is ridiculous. It man. is so ridiculous. The, I, I'm not. I'm so glad the USC decided to just give us the product the way it is, man. Yeah. Like just I, I don't, don't need don't CGI fake. people in in the crowd. Don't put fake crowd noise when the fights ha- happening. How bad would that be to pipe in? Just crowd murmur during it's fights. It's ridiculous. Like, I was talking with Oscar. Like, I do agree that, the, like, the biggest moments, like the biggest main events, yeah. they miss something from the fans not sure. being there. You know, they do. But as far as the overall product goes, like, I kind of enjoy, like, being able to hear the corners, being yeah. able to hear, you know, the, everything well, that's, going that's on. What, that's why I think you like the like the, the Contender Series. And we've, yeah. we've told people there's something about being in that – quaint environment yeah man but what's unique about and and the big difference of the the contender series these are guys that would be a prospect you know just once removed from being in, you know in a smaller avenue or smaller venue a smaller promotion and they're getting a step into the ufc but now that you're taking these huge main events and putting it in the same field, you know, to have a Dan Hooker and Dustin Poirier be in absolute silence it's crazy. is so weird. It's but, weird. But there's something very kind of cool and unique because every hit, there's just something that oh. sounds so unique about hearing, you know, fist on flesh in that environment as opposed to when you don't hear it in a, a full crowd. You might hear the stomp of the octagon as people are going through, but there's something so just uh, – Raw about hearing it in that quiet octagon. I enjoy and, it, and it's it's amazing. It, it's totally amazing. But you're right. There is something that is missed. There is that whole caught up in the emotion of the crowd. That I always tell people, like you might not even be the biggest fight fan, but when you go see a UFC event and you got the loud music and you got the crowd, just that that roar, right? It's that buzz, bro. I'm fucking getting goosebumps. Think about it, like <laughs> like there's something about it that is so unique. That even if you're not the biggest fan, there's something about being in that environment that it heightens some senses in your body. There's something sort of primal. Like da- Dana always liked to say, you know, you, you put a fight on the quarter and you got this and this and this. That's People will, will stop and watch. There's something so unique about it. But us junkies, you could still put us in a quiet, absolute quiet room and watch a fight. And there's just – there's a whole other sort of neat element For to it sure. that, that – the hitting of the the bodies, the face, the kicks. When you get that solid kick, 
and where you're just like, oh man, that had to have hurt. Whereas sometimes I think some of that stuff gets lost in a big moment where there is a lot of crowd. You mm-hmm. just you just see the impact, and yeah, then yeah, you yeah. look at the face, and you're like, okay, that looked like it hurt. But you don't really get to you hear don't get the, the full impact. effect of it. But when you hear that in a quiet a quiet arena, you're just like, wow, yeah, that's amazing. I, I, I completely agree with that, and, and I am so glad that they ultimately decided to just leave the product as it is. Yes. Let's leave it, you know. It would have been so cheesy. Because you got to think, in five years from now or even a couple years from now, who isn't going to go back and watch some of these baseball games and be like, bro, that was cheesy as fuck. <laughs> like, look at your outfield. Like, you take a shot and you see the pitcher and he's pitching and there's nobody behind him. But all of a sudden in the outfield, there's all these like sort of characters. Sort so of weird. There. I get it, but it's like who who greenlighted that? Do you think? Do you th- imagine if somebody came to Dana with that? I don't know. Dana's like a total far off uh, person to to use a judgment. But imagine somebody in production coming to Dana. Dana, I got an idea. I got an idea. I'm going to take the octagon, I'm going to put all these fake CGI characters in there, and they're just going to sort of just wave their hands. They're going to do the wave. They're going to do all this stuff while the fight's going. What do you think? He would be like, you're crazy. You're absolutely you're an idiot. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my face. You're out. You're out of here. <laughs> like, you're an, you're an idiot. Like, are you serious? Are you serious? That's so, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm glad to stay that way. Hopefully never. I mean, it sounds like he never even cons- – like they talked about it, but he never considered it. Yeah. And, and I like it. I, watching these other sports, man, I, I think it's cheesy. I agree with you, man. I think it's cheesy. But I will say, if you think it's cheesy, you know what can make it better? What? Make it a little bit more enjoyable experience? What? DraftKings. Oh, that's You go to DraftKings because, listen, DraftKings, of course, is the leader in one-day fantasy sports. And, of course, they like to put you in the center of all the action. Of course – you know, what we like to push is the MMA side. I mean, if you haven't tried it yet, Fantasy MMA is easy to play. You can do it for this weekend's card, UFC on ESPN Plus 31. You just pick six fighters, stay under the salary cap, and pile up points for advances, takedowns, and more. Kind of really test your knowledge of the game. Not just picking winners. You need to know who's going to pile up those points along the way as well. Now, but what if you say, MMA, it's not for me. I would say, what the hell are you doing listening to this podcast? <laughs> that would be silly you're, of you. You're in the wrong place. <laughs> but if you made it this far, trying to figure out what we're talking about, if MMA isn't for you, listen, there are other sports as well. And now the other sports are back, man. You got you got uh, baseball going on. You, you got, got you got golf going on. You got basketball going. And basketball, I think, w- would be a phone. Basketballs are going because they're, they're racking up points. So what you do is download the DraftKings app right now. Just download the app right now. Use the promo code FROSTY, Frosty, baby, to take part in their free giveaways as well as to test your skills in some paid contests where you can win up to $1 million. Plus, you can get an initial deposit bonus up to $500. They're really put, They're really excited about the basketball product right now. Uh, they got a little tagline here. I like it. 88 games, 22 teams, a whole new game. The same leader in one-day fantasy sports. Mm. DraftKings. Minimum five dollar deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. <laughs> now, the biggest- Frosty, <laughs> don't forget Frosty. Don't forget your code is Frosty, y'all. And if you happen to live in Nevada, maybe eh. say you live with your parents back home in Texas, like I do. <laughs> just, 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 just a little side note. Damn you, casinos! Uh, all right, uh, listen. The lasting story from this past week's event. And I really uh, I usually don't like to look back too far, but obviously I wasn't with you for the end episode, so I want to get your take as well. Um, it's the Herb Dean stoppage, right? I mean, the Herb Dean, Dan Hardy kind of battle raged on in the media this week, and, um, you know, it, it's such an <laughs> interesting point because, well, so <laughs> a couple of things. First of all, one of the biggest keys that w- w- when, when Oscar Willis and I were talking last week, and he brought it up, and it's so true, it's like, well, what if Herb was the one that went over to, 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 uh, to Dan? And it seems like that's actually what happened. You know, Dan was actually in his broadcast position, and Herb actually walked over to him. Because the biggest thing was, yeah. okay, you have the right to question the decision. Uh, you know, the stoppage was it good, was it not? But maybe not yelling at the referee on air. Like, that's probably a bad look. Uh, but it turns out well, that Herb Dean so kind of walked o- Yeah, It was so quiet. Well, if you, if you go back well, and no, watch. Well, no, I'm talking about the afterwards. Where he's like, yeah, you, I'll do you, my job. You do your, you but know. But if you go back and watch while uh, they were still in the octagon, right after the, the fight ended, when they were still going over to the thing, you see Herb, because it's. <laughs> 
We call it herb, herb in America. Herb is what they say in England. No, but uh, you can actually watch Herb uh, look over and sort of point and start jawing while they're still in the octagon. Right. So immediately, so as once I saw that, I was like, something's going to happen. Yep. Something's going to go down because if it was in any other scenario where there's a lot of music, uh, a lot of noise, a lot of people talking, it's the kind of thing I think that Herb probably would have just been like, ugh. That was kind of a dick. I heard you. Whatever. Right. But the fact that that was all that was happened, um, that he just took it maybe a little more personal. But I was just so surprised that he, he let it get to him so much that he went over there. But being in that whole sort of situation and it being so quiet, maybe it just it just sounded tenfold worse in his mind I'm sure. than what it probably was. But it was super loud. I mean, yeah. it was it was ungodly. Like, he uh, if if you want to say that if you want to stay in character, if you're the the color commentary, my job is to stay here. I'm not to, I'm not going to get pulled out of character. I'm not going to get drawn too much into the action outside of it. Dan completely jumped out of a character and immersed himself in the action of what was going on. That's the kind of thing. If it was anywhere else, I mean, it's like if you're watching a play and you see, oh my gosh, they killed the main character. How dare you, motherfucker! <laughs> you know, to really say something, and then to have the actor come back and be like, "Well, fuck you, sir." You know, it was it. it, it was both of them jumped out of character and did something out of line and became something else. I hated to see it. But I understood both sides. I, I just hated to, hated to see it. I hated to see it too, and I hated to see the way it continued to play out. Now, yeah, on the and a half episode, I, I actually said, "Listen, I actually kind of don't fault Herb as much as I think a lot of people did." Yeah. I, what you know, what I saw, you know, uh, for people that didn't get a chance to listen, is you know, I, I, I did see that when Herbert fell back, um, his head was off the canvas. He was looking at his opponent. His arms were in a position. Now you can say his arms were. It was that were, weird th- stanky arm. That's, yeah, I that mean, maybe it was there involuntarily almost. Yeah. But he also had the kind of the knee up as well. There was a knee shield, and and Herb was in a good position to see the eyes. And I mean, literally, I, I think, and I, I don't, I'm not trying to blame Trinaldo in, in it because he has no role in this at all. But honestly, had he just walked up and, and threw a couple punches instead of standing over, and we're not talking about any of this because it gets called like that. I'm not blaming him, but I don't have as much of a problem with the stoppage as, as I've seen a lot of people yeah. do. In fact, uh, Ivan uh, over at uh, the Patreon.com slash MMA Roadshow, he said, John, you need to go back and watch it again. His point, he said, Trinaldo's standing over him, and Herbert wasn't making any defensive moves. Rather, Herbert was rotating away from Trinaldo. The guy was clearly not fully conscious. And I agree, yeah. he wasn't fully conscious, yeah. but we allow people to battle out of day spots sometimes. You know what I mean? I didn't think you know, he was in imminent danger of you know his life on right. the line or anything like that. So I still give Herbert a little bit of a pass. Um, I understand what he was seeing, I think. And I, and I think he ended up echoing a lot of those same things when he did his thing. But a couple of things is is, 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 is I, I hated to see this because these are two sharp minds. These are two people yeah. that are very passionate about the sport and very involved in the sport. For instance, Herb's video. Um, I like the fact that – dude, I actually like the fact that he shot a video, man. I love that. Transparency, discussion, man, more of that. Like more, yep. of, more of that. But, again, even in the middle of his, he, he kind of got a little chippy. He's like, when you put your Superman shirt on and decide you're better than anybody in the room, at that point now you go from my professional explanation to yep. now I'm chirping at Dan Hardy a little bit. You know yep. what I mean? And I, I just – I hate. I've hated to see this the way this whole thing played out because it's, it's. It seems like it's getting a little bit personal, and uh, I. I think discussion and dialogue and, and openness is good, but I. I, ho- I hope they can kind of. I don't know. Maybe get together and yeah, and, and talk it out a little bit or something. Try to squash the beef. Squash I, and the I beef. Agree. It would have been nice if he would have just said something. You know, I think a lot of those times some of that stuff happens, in that just that hyper time travel sort of thing where it seems like it's a lot of time has happened and it's really just fractions of a second you know when it first happened and he went down i thought i was like okay i'm gonna give herb the benefit of the doubt he needs to reposition and 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 get a real good look at the guy's eyes right but when he went down I, i saw no intelligent defense by any means but again when you go back and count it, it was maybe just a matter of seconds. Yeah, it's when you when you start playing those instant replays in slow mo, and you're like, "Look how long look it's how taking long. them." You're I like, mean, "Oh, come on, man!" It was a matter of if he was in the wrong position. Most of these guys are really good at being in in a good position to catch most stuff, but depending on where a strike happens, you can never tell how a guy's going to fall back 
And at, at some point, you might just be on the opposite, the bad side of, of the attacker and not be able to, to go and see the guy that's taking, uh, you know, taking the fall. So, one, I was giving Herb a little bit better of the doubt, like, okay, the, he goes down, he needs to reposition himself so he can actually make a decent view of it. Right. But then there's that moment when, when you see Tornado sort of standing there for a moment, and then you didn't see the sort of, you know, stop, 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 but... At that point in time, if I and I put myself in Herb's position, where if I had to then reposition myself, look down at 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 uh, you know the guy on the ground and see him there, and then look up at the the guy coming in for strikes, every little eye glance that's looking in one direction, one direction, might take a, a half a second right. or a second, right? And you can't possibly just focus on the one because you're looking to see what's happening and. <sighs> I, I just give I give him the benefit of the doubt. I think when I go back and I look at it, you know, of course, when I first saw him fall, in my mind, I was like, oh, it's it's over. But we always expect there's always going to be a couple strikes just yes. to make sure that it's set. You know, go until the happened, referee pulls you off. That's yeah, why the rule is there. You I think go just, until the referee pulls since you off. Since it wasn't completely just seamless, that's the part that I think people are freaked out about. The fact that it felt like. Francisco could have stopped. He could have just been like, uh, oh, walk off. But at that point, you couldn't tell because if a fighter's holding his hand up like he's defending himself, at that point, you're like, okay, he looks like he's good. But it was just the way that when I saw it, it looked like his hand was already sort of extended and it looked like it, it was already locked. It was right. like that stanky leg that just you fall and you're like, uh, it's good. There it is. It's the same. So in my eyes, I knew he was out when he went down, and I never saw anything that proved otherwise. But for me, it it just didn't seem egregious to me. I didn't feel That's like what I think. I didn't feel like, oh I, my god, that was the worst I, thing. I would have been. I would have been entirely had 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 Herb stopped it as soon as he went down. I would have no problem with that. To yep. be honest with you, I'd be perfectly fine with yep. it. Go okay, I'm cool with that. Yep. But I don't think it, you said it, man. Everybody's acting like this. This egregious. Yeah. Horrible stoppage, and I don't think it was. And I don't think I, I don't think there's. How I many think what, strikes did he even take? Two, two. Extra. I think he ended up taking like four afterwards, and and one of them yeah. did land pretty clean. I think like two really clean yeah. ones. Four, I think four Not punches. That, but and everybody's gonna be like, oh, well, every you know every extra one that every unnecessary is the same. And I'm not trying to say like, oh, okay, you know, well, four is better than you know eight or whatever. Right. But I know when I just watch it and I think of it in real time, it didn't feel. It felt a little off, but I didn't feel like oh. You know, Herb is the worst ref ever, you right. know, by any means. But it just, after what happened after it, um, one, it, Dan, if Dan wasn't watching a screen as well and was just watching the action, would not have had the same reaction. I think by watching and the camera view made it look so good when you could just sort right. of tell, like, he was knocked out, that it wouldn't have been the same. Like, so maybe that's where some people say, you know, uh, you know, Maybe if they weren't so close to the ring, if they were a little bit more separated, maybe they would be a little bit distant. Maybe it wouldn't get the same reaction or whatever. But I don't know. I I, I was a little surprised on Dan's side from getting it. But now um, it's almost like he's dug his, his heels in. And that's the part where I'm just like, I get it. You know, the refs need to have some sort of accountability. But now it's become bigger than um, what it – that moment like yep. the people needed like it felt like people it's been simmering people are like we need to have refs accountable for what's going on and this is the point in time where they're just like this is it this is that this is the the i'm putting my my flagpole in the ground and i'm gonna stick right here and you're gonna pay attention to this one there were a, there's been a heck of a lot worse instances of a late stoppage yes. That should have, those should have been the ones that people are really really raising to stink about. This isn't one where. Hey, but if it does if it does help move things forward, if it where does, I, you know, because I've I have always said, but we've talked about that over the years in this podcast. Even you know, I used to talk about my good friend uh, Brian Boyle over in, in the UK, who was uh, a, a soccer football, if you will, referee and, and linesman, and he used to talk about like the you know the evaluation forms and scoring that they had. I mean, there were like actual like scoring criteria for officials and it yeah. was they were ranked and they were you know and they were evaluated and that's how the assignments were doled out and, and there was constant you know um statistical evaluation basically and i wish we did have something like that i yeah. I, I think there should be something like that and, and you know they'll tell you this you know the local athletic commissions will tell you that they do it mark ratner will tell you that he does it at yeah. the ufc but that's all very kind of 
kind of loose. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not, it's not real like – you know, this is the the rankings of of this particular person, yeah. or who's actually the best would right be now. To see oh, it'd be rankings. so good. You know, you got somebody that's evaluating. Oh, he was out of position here. Oh, he was a little slow on the trigger here. He was perfect. I mean, yeah. The the metrics would be interesting to see what metrics you could come up with. But um, but I, you know, obviously in soccer, there's a lot more things you can judge, yeah. and, and a lot more time too. That's but, another one. We've been talking about all the canned audio. Soccer has embraced that oh, canned audio. Awesome canned fan audio. Stuff. Uh, and, and sorry, I know that uh, I haven't been paying attention to this story as much, but what has Herbert said about, like, has he gone went around? <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't remember any of it. I, you know, that's but, I funny. Mean, I don't I've, know if he's really I've been on furlough out. this week and reconnecting with my family, so I haven't followed it probably as much as I should have this week either. But I know at the time, I mean, he got right back up and was, I mean, he didn't protest it really, yeah. but he also didn't. You know, he also didn't look like, oh, you know, woozy and falling off his yeah, stool yeah, yeah. or anything like that. Because so. I didn't remember seeing him sort of contested, so I was like, okay, you know, I don't think anybody will say that it was, uh, you know, there was any unfairness with, with it being stopped at when it was. But if if anybody should be upset about anything, that's the guy. And if he's not upset about it, then okay, we're probably okay. But <laughs> <laughs> probably all right. With it. We're probably all right. That's gotta. That's gotta suck. That he's gotta feel like now I'm gonna be associated with this rest. Of my it life. is right. Uh, now, but, I'm, but, now I, I'm but part you're of right. This. I hope that I hope that Herb and Dan are able to sit back. <laughs> yeah, I love just bitching about that name because you know it's so funny. Like uh, when, in, in America, the herbs when we put stuff and when you go get stuff and you add stuff, it's herbs. Sure. But when you go anywhere else, they're herbs. And I always loved it when uh, there was like this English comedian and they're like, all oh, you fucking Americans, you always ask us why we say herb. It's because there's a fucking H in the front of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. that makes point. sense. Yeah, that makes sense. That it makes is. Sense. There is. There's an H. <laughs> well, for insight like that, if you, I should say that if you like what you're hearing, <laughs> Uh, make sure that wherever you're listening to this podcast that you are uh, subscribed to us, man. Make sure if you got a, a second uh, to leave us some feedback, rate us, review us. Uh, we'd appreciate that as well. Me, personally, I use uh, Apple Podcasts. But, you know, wherever you go, leave us feedback there. And if you want to take the game to the next level, head on over to patreon.com slash the MMA Roadshow, where for as little as $3 a month, you can have uh, exclusive <clears throat> access to all of our and a half episodes, which is pretty much every weekend now, <laughs> because it's basically uh, it just fights all the time. Oh. But uh, but we're doing it. It's been fun, man. It's been fun doing it week after week. So uh, it kind of ties into this. But uh, Jay Garziulo said, and, and it ties into this perfectly. Is what we're talking. About. What is worse, an early stoppage or a late stoppage? In both instances past Saturday, Herb Dean stepped in late, or Herb Dean, if you like. But both were slightly <laughs> awkward scenarios where they could have been uh, some doubt as to whether the fighter could recover. Uh, the other one being, of course, Tanner Bozer's victory um, when his opponent was, uh, Rafael Pessoa, was covered up. Threw about ten punches, but they all landed to the arm. So I, I yeah. don't think it was any. He said, as a fan, I think an early stoppage feels worse. No one wants to see a fighter take unnecessary damage when they can't defend themselves, but we also don't want to see a fighter lose half their check and face a career setback because a ref was trigger happy. An early stoppage invalidates the fight to some extent and feels unjust. A late stoppage feels awful. It could have real long-term consequences, but it is definitive. We all know refereeing is an incredibly difficult job, and maybe Herb errs towards the side of letting <laughs> the fight go a few more seconds ruined it for to you. make sure that it's really <laughs> over. What would your typical fighter, coach, or manager say? Um, I can tell you without fail, every fighter would say, let me fight. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me go let me out go of my out. shield. I, don't, I mean, fighters specifically tell, uh, tell referees, do not stop the fight unless I'm unconscious. Yep. And the referee goes, I'm doing what I want to do anyway. Like, sorry, yeah. that's not happening. So I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, 99.999%. Uh, there might be one or two that go, no, nah, if, if I'm looking a little woozy there, take me out. Yeah. But you said exactly that. Half the paycheck is gone. Yep. The, the 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 career arc takes a move. Now you know yep. a fight that you may have had right in front of you is now two years away from you. You know that sort of thing. Unless you're one of those select few superstars, everything has changed. So I can tell you to a man and woman, the fighter will say, "Don't stop it until I'm out." Yep. Coaches and managers a little bit different. I think they want to see. Um, I think they want to see fighter safety, but they also don't want to see those moments ripped away. You know, they also know how hard. That guy or gal is working in the gym, how much sacrifices yeah. they made, what they do on a daily basis, that they would rather say, dude, you know what, man, two punches too many, 
we know what we signed up yeah. for, even as coaches We've and been managers. Been working for eight to ten weeks to get here, you know, or, or longer. It'd be one thing that if you're asking somebody that's got money on the line too, you can have some people that are like, "Don't you dare stop that fight." Yeah. And you can have others that say, "Yo, oh, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool." It's a fine line, and it, and it is what highlights why a referee's job is so difficult because it's a yeah. very fine line. On the one hand, they'll tell you fighter safety is paramount. We value fighter safety over everything else. But on the other hand, you do want to make sure that opportunities aren't being ripped away. That that the fight endings are yeah. definitive. That people aren't, you know, going, dude. I was, I was fine in there. So, for me, I guess I'd say I'd honestly lean towards the idea of being a couple punches too late. And I know that may sound terrible because I understand what these athletes are putting on the line. I understand the the long term health consequences they're talking about. You know, we've we've mentioned it several times over the years. If you're a long time listener to this podcast, you know, Kevin Ioli. You know, Hall of Fame boxing reporter has, has been ringside for seven different boxers' deaths. So, I mean, he's yeah, seen crazy. the horrific nature of what combat sports can do. And I, and I don't, you know, I've, I'm, I, I always say it, and I, I don't think it's a matter of if, it's a matter of when. I think it's going to happen at some point. I know that's terrible to say, but it is the nature of the sport. Um, and I don't want to do anything to rush that along. I don't want to be. Any, I don't want to do anything to, to to make it happen any faster than it needs to. Um, so that may sound a little barbaric to say I'd rather go one or two punches. But listen, I've been at fights where 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 I've stood up and said stop the fight. You know, whether it's a fight that I'm broadcasting, whether it's a, a fight that I'm cage side for 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 being you. a journalist. Look at you pulling a Dan Arden. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well done, sir. Um, yeah, I've, 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 I, you know, I've, I've done the same thing that Dan Hardy is, and I never, to be honest with you, I never faulted Dan. I, I understand what Herb said about, uh, you know, I don't know whose voice that is, and this is a yeah. different era in the pandemic era when you're when you can really dial in and you yeah. can hear those voices. You know whose voice? Well, it is. yeah, you knew that was Dan Hardy. Come on, Herb. come on, Herb. You knew that was Dan Hardy. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, you know, I, I've done that. I mean, I will admit, and it's only a handful of times. And, I mean, I've, I've been cage side for literally thousands of fights. And there's been a yeah. handful of times where I'm like, hey, you know what I mean, where, where you're in fear or something. Um, but I would say overall, if I was a whole, I guess I'd say, if we're talking about every single, every single fight, every single KO stoppage, every single TKO stoppage, would you rather see it stop two punches too late or two punches too early? probably say two punches too late. Now, I'm not talking about 10 punches too late, 15 yeah. punches too late, yeah. 20 punches too late. I'm saying air a touch on the side of caution, which is maybe why I'm so kind of understanding of Herb Dean's decisions this past week is, um, you know, I, if Trinaldo keeps punching, we're not having this conversation. But because yeah. he hesitates, because we're not definitive, because there's not any clear danger, it's not stopped. So, I, yeah. I don't know. Hopefully, that doesn't make me a, a, a barbaric jackass. But I know that these fighters would appreciate being given a little bit longer leash. But I do understand as well. We're, we are talking about their health and safety at the end of the day. Yeah. well, And and I think that it all, a lot of it in this whole discussion comes back to the if there was better consistency amongst the, the refs, maybe this wouldn't even be an issue because we would just – everything would sort of seem the same. Things would be getting stopped at the same point. Mm -hmm. Now we have some guys that just seems that things tend to go a little bit longer. And we have some guys that, have, you know, t seem to have a bad habit of stopping things a little bit early. Maybe if refs on a whole would just were a little more consistent on when they finally saw that spot that was just like, okay, enough's enough. This needs to be. But I know me personally, I guess, you know, I, I kind of, I, I maybe I allow fighters to kind of sway me in that way where, I'd almost want the fighters if 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 I know that every fighter has told me they want to go out on their shield, I want them to be able to. Yeah. But you're right. I'd rather it let that let that amount be okay. I'm gonna let you go on your shield, but I'm only gonna go a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna let you take you, two. You punches. can limp off on your shield. Yeah. You can't actually. I'm go not. I'm not, I'm not gonna let you go to the point where you're out and somebody just beats you to the point where you're like, okay, is he dead or not? You know, there needs to be a line, but. I know as a viewer, I've always felt – well, I don't know if about always. I know there's times when I've seen a guy get stopped where I'm like, oh, he clearly could have went. I know I've felt bad, but I probably – my gut has made me feel worse when I've watched it when it's been just a really late stoppage. Right. I feel worse for the guy. But ultimately, I mean, I know that stuff cumulative, once it adds up, is much, much worse for them. And I don't want to make light of it, but – if they're out, they're probably not feeling these extra punches. 
<laughs> but I know their brain is feeling it yeah, long exactly. term. That's, that's you know? the point. Their, their yeah, brain the later point. on is feeling it. But I know right at that moment, you know, if I'm knocked the fuck out, I'm not feeling you hit me two extra times. Now, if you break my nose when I'm out, that's going to suck, you know. But I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I think it does. It boils down to the fact that if if judging was a little bit more consistent, that maybe we wouldn't have this big discussion of – early stoppage, late stoppage, if we could just get them all to sort of have that normal sort of range, maybe we wouldn't have it as much. People would see a certain point and people would think, okay, no, this threshold was met, and of course the ref's going to stop them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, at this point now, it just seems to be a little bit, you know, you know, intelligent defense is not a this, 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 you know, uh, you know, it's up for discussion sort of thing. So it makes it a little bit guys have a little bit of leeway because you're right you know a lot of think when a lot of times the people are like oh the fighter popped right back up so obviously he was probably fine but we see people go out completely out and once the squeeze is released around the neck they're completely conscious and they're up and they're talking it's like well was he out yeah yeah. you know but they're just such highly tuned athletes that they recover a heck of a lot quicker than what i would if somebody puts a choke on me just put a pillow into my head because I'm probably not going to come back up for a while. But these guys do, and I think that's why sometimes we're like, oh, that that must have been an early stoppage where uh, – I don't know. It, it, I mean – It's tough, man. It's a tough it's, spot. It's, it's a, it's a like tough, Like you said, tough I mean, you spot. said it, the, the intelligent defense thing. And, again, you know, not to belabor the point, but with Herbert, his, ar- his, his eyes were tracking his opponent. His arms were in a defensive posture. Now, whether they were there involuntarily or not, yeah. he had the, kind of the knee shield in place as well. So, I mean, he was doing the right things – but maybe he wasn't reacting as well. So it's it's tough, but it's I, tough. I think the discussion's good. The discussion's good. Let's it just, good let's to just talk keep about it. it. Let's keep it positive. Let's make, let's have everybody working together instead of, you know, being chippy at each other a little bit. <laughs> instead of starting a fight outside of the cage yeah, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I will say though, I think I think Dan gets more of a pass than he may have before cuz I think he even said, "Look, hey, I probably shouldn't have done it on air." But if it turns out that Herb walked over to Artie, that's that's totally different. Well, they they and it looks like it broke did. the six foot uh, radius. They were not. Pract- <laughs> I am more enraged about more how enraged. they were not. Social wearing distancing masks. was not. They broke the social Well, maybe if they had a Verdum face mask. This mask is the funniest yet creepiest <laughs> thing I have ever seen. Shout out to Dustin Love for taking the idea and making it a reality. It uh, is so creepy. I posted a picture of it on <laughs> patreon.com uh, slash MMA Roadshow as well as uh, the John Morgan MMA Instagram as well. It is very creepy, but it is hilarious. It is. And it's like the, it's the perfect ratio of bl- when it's blown up. Like, because Fabrice has done that face, and sometimes the, the mouth is a little bit maybe more you know, smaller lip right, face right. or whatever, but it's perfectly blown up to look so super. It's almost like the, uh, like the Joker has that, it, you know, super wide shit eating grin. That's just so sort of weird and creepy about yeah, yeah. it. Like that's what that is. And you know what's, that it, is the shit of nightmares. It is, right the, there. it is the thing of nightmares. Make sure you, you pull up the Instagram or the Patreon to check it out. And I think what's great is where, wherever he got these made, it's the fact that even like the stitching here is like flesh colored, so yeah. it goes all the way to the edge. Like you know, if there's like a white seam on the top and the bottom, yeah. it's not nearly as creepy. But it's not, so it just kind of blends into my face, and I cannot wait to go to B Dubs tonight and put this on and I just see what the reaction Etsy. is. You, you ever order like I have a mask I got from Etsy, so you order from these people that make it for oh, like house. personally, yeah, like. I, uh, maybe this is a company, but imagine if that was somebody that's just like, I'll take orders, send me an image, they and I'll put like, it on a mask. What like, kind of creepy human being What kind of creepy <laughs> dude is sending me this face? <laughs> Having no idea of what they were creating, but it came out incredible. Well done, Dustin. It is the awesomest and most creepy, weird sort of, I mean, like, you need to have, like, a, a white Van I think our, like our former rocker. our former colleague Ben Folks uh, jumped on the Instagram and was like you're you're most certainly on an FBI watch list now <laughs> I was like yeah probably so probably so he's like I think you deserve it uh, all right listen uh, one piece of news I wanted to ask you about real quick before we talk about this week's fight um, Habib took to Instagram now that now we know that we're getting Habib and Justin Gates we've got a date schedule that's dope can't wait for that fight unbelievable um, can't imagine that doesn't take place in Abu Dhabi I imagine. You know that ends up being part of the five-year deal, um, but uh, you know he can't. He went to Instagram and said, "Look, Gaethje, then GSP." And I didn't. I didn't pay much mind of it. I mean, these are just these statements that people make, right? Like, uh, hey, you know, he, the kind of teasing plans, throwing things out there. That's you know, first of all, 
you can't look past Justin Gaethje, man. Like, Justin yeah. Gaethje, you know what I mean? Like, bro, if you're just thinking, oh, by the smash way. Smash this yeah, guy. That's no an problem. easy one. Yeah, yeah, he's no, he's nothing. I'll just smash him. Uh, you can't look past him. But, so I was I was a guest on uh, Chad Duke's uh, radio show earlier this week, and he asked me, what do you think about Dana saying that he's in? Do you, do you believe it? And I hadn't really thought about it because, again, I, I wasn't paying it a lot of mind because I'm not looking past the fight with Gaethje first. Gaethje's dangerous. But I did think about it, and you know what? I think the UFC would be down for this, man. Like Dana, you know, Dana clearly got upset with George St. Pierre after he he won the middleweight belt and dumped it, right? Yeah. Because he he said, "Man, we had an agreement. You said you were going to defend it, and you didn't." You know, clearly mad. But to me, this is the perfect situation because uh, you, the the belt's being dumped either way. You know what I mean? Because if it's Habib's last fight, then it's being lost either way. So yeah. here's a situation where I think Dana might go. I mean, because dude, can you imagine the fan bases of GSP and Habib? I mean, that you talk about a money generating fight, and man, a historical fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I get there's other names for Habib to fight. You know, man, what, what wouldn't it be a damn shame we never get to see this Tony Ferguson fight? But good lord, I, I don't think you can schedule that for his last fight. Uh, just with all all that's happened. But man, you talk about two of the all time greats. You know what I mean? If it seems like one of those, you know, even though, yes, GSP would be a little bit past his competitive prime, um, s- still, I mean, for Habib to put that name on his resume would be insane. And if GSP comes back and wins a title in the third weight class and, oh, by the way, beats the 29-0 and Habib and puts the first and only L on his record, right. oh, my God, don't come to me with John Jones anymore. <laughs> don't come to me with Demetrius Johnson anymore. I have now gone Fully over yeah. in the camp of George St. Pierre, the three division title holder, the man to beat the undefeated Habib Nurmagomedov. I mean, so I could, I, you know, even though I know that, da- that Dana was frustrated with GSP after the last thing, I could see Dana totally being into this because it's like everything lines up just perfectly. This belt's being dumped afterwards, one way or the other. Yeah, and as much as you know, Dana is I, that fight. There's not many if any, bigger fights than what that would be, especially money-wise. And as much as Dana might have been upset at the time, Dana also loves big fights. He loves big numbers. And I guarantee, I wouldn't be surprised if if Dana, I mean, Dana has always had respect for GSP. And regardless of of, if whatever has happened in the past, if GSP would call up Dana right now, it's not like Dana's going to be like, oh, it's GSP. I'm not going to take that call. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Like that's... New number. Who dis? (laughs) (laughs) New phone. Who dis? (laughs) Like, he's going to... I mean, Dana, as much as he might have been upset, I mean, he respects, and I think he truly likes GSP, and he understands that it's money at that point. It's money, and it's also providing something that fans would be absolutely dying to see. If it came down and GSP was like, Dana, I know I've said I retired, you know, me and Anderson, we've been talking and we want to have this fight. And we know there's no belt. You think Dana's going to be like, no, no, you said you were gonna, you were retired. It's not whatever. I mean, like he understands. Right. Like if, if GSP called him up and said, I want this, he's going to make it happen regardless. I think because he knows that at some point, and, and if not right now, because GSP's already kind of been – saying you know I, i'm gonna go out on the top i'm already i'm done you know yep. you know so many guys wait too long to get out but we all know there's still time for one more there's still yep. time for one more and it and if gsp made that call i just don't see um dana saying no to I, it i will say especially this. with habib saying yes i want that fight. i will say this in in saying all that let me be clear that i think it only works if it's at 155 pounds, I don't think a 170 pound fight means as much, right? Like because if there's no belt on the line at that point, Habib's moving up a division. So I don't care if there's a belt. No, you don't care. So just to see I the fight. I just want to see them fight. I mean, you're right. Yes, it's it's cool if there's a, a I belt think the on it. The stakes are so much higher if it's a 155. Well, I mean, because then it's it's sort of maybe more legitimate because people say, okay, I understand why these two are fighting because yeah, they're the fighting. His- for that's what a I'm belt. saying. It's the history for you GSP. Know? It's not Habib moving up a division for for no, if you're gonna move up a division to fight Usman, you know what I mean, or whoever. You yeah, know. but it's but I mean I can see the fact that Habib's moving up. He's he's moving up to fight what most people consider one of the greatest of all True. time. So for him, it's a personal challenge. It's not like you know even every guy that's like you know every time I fight, you know whether they they're the title holder, they're like I'm fighting for a new belt. I'm fighting for the new challenge. It's right. about that new challenge. It's not about uh, you know it's about that person that they feel is the best to be opposite of them at that time. 
And he's always respected GSP, has always had that wish list of that being a fight. So for me personally, don't care. I don't care. Just make it like, happen. I just want to see them fight because these are two guys I, I regard as being two of the finest in what they do. Yes. And I know if GSP, if there's the possibility that soon we're not going to have that possibility of watching him fight. Yeah, yeah. So if that's what it takes for him to fight, I'm I'm all about it because I would love to see that fight. Just like I said, if you gave me Anderson and GSP, I'd be just as excited. Well, not just as excited. I'd be it'd more be excited cool. to see. Be, it'd be kind of it'd be, be cool. kind of like when Vanderlei and Chuck finally fought, and it was a little too late. But you're still yeah. like, it's still Vanderlei and Chuck. It's like still, I'm down for this. Yeah, I mean, because these guys that we all love and have watched for so long and have, have respected, soon are going to you know, be gone. Like I was thinking about this the other day. I've been listening to a lot of uh, music I haven't listened to that influenced me uh, in my playing style as I've went. And it's funny. I was looking, listening. I pulled up this old record on, on Amazon music. I was like, Oh wow. That album dropped 40 years ago. I was <laughs> like, wow. You know, and, but w- what was crazy and why I bring it up is I was like, man, let me look at their tour dates. Let me see. I mean, granted, we can't tell when anybody's touring now because of the pandemic, yeah. but a lot of these cats are getting to the point. They can't, play like they used to they can't do the music we remember them and we see them in our heads and we hear the music and what they've done but at some point they can't deliver they can't go out and do these shows and i was so sad i just felt like garbage like i I felt like i missed my opportunity to catch these guys because maybe i didn't want to pay the ticket price to go see him or maybe i didn't want to travel to the state next over that's where we're getting with some of these cats. We're going to get to the point where we're not going to have that possibility. So part of me for just nostalgia's sake and just for just being that like a, a kid, I want to see these things that we used to talk about. Like it was, I mean, you got to think like Keith Richards probably has like another 15 years of prime playing left. At least, <laughs> at least, you know, you know, at that point he's got the formaldehyde bottle just out on stage with him, you know, uh, but you, I mean, but that's it, you know. And at some point, you know, when I think about it, who doesn't get a little bit, you know, sort of depressed and feel a little bit of your your heart has died when you think that you're never going to see GSP perform again? Yeah, it sucks when you think about that. So if it's like, for me, I would rather see him perform uh, at whatever weight just to fight one last time instead of saying like, oh, okay, well, you know, if it's not for a belt, you can't watch him fight. I'm right. like, I I just want to see him fight. I want to be able to say I saw GSP fight one more time before he hangs it up. I know. And the idea of him and Habib. Now, again, let me preface it again by saying yep. do not look past Justin Gaethje, man. Justin Gaethje well, is so informed well, right I think now. we've talked about this before. Even if he lost, do you not still want to see him fight him? <sighs> yeah, I do. I still want to see I him do. fight him. I do. That's w- And that's why, you know, I know I we've do. had that discussion and I know we've talked about it. That's why for me it doesn't matter that there's a belt. I just want to see them fight. These are two guys that have done these styles and these sort of just, I'm going to get you down and you cannot get up and I'm going to pound on you. And they've been so good at it that you just want to see, like the way that GSP was able to come back and just pull like a rabbit out of the hat. You're like, wow, how, you, how did he do it? Yep. He did it again. Can he do it again? And I, I'd rather say that and, and give him the chance to do it now instead of, three or four years down the line when we're just like, please, GSP, please give it to us now. Then we're like, okay, yeah. now I'm really handicapping the guy. Yeah, no, 45-year-old 40, GSP is like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm yeah, good. so I don't know. So, so for me, even if – and I'm not looking past Justin. I'm just trying to say that I would still want to see that fight. So regardless of a belt for me, Justin can win that fight, and I still want to see Habib fight. GSP, but that's because that's a fight that we've talked about and we thought about just from their styles for so long, you know. But I just want to see GSP fights more because I, I know that that time is is almost done. And you know, it's funny me because again, bringing it to the reason I wanted to talk about it to begin with because I don't want to look past Justin Gaethje. What made me think about it is would the UFC really be willing to do it? And if 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 uh, Habib did lose. Then there's absolutely no reason not to do the fight. Right. You know what I mean? Then at that Especially point, if both guys are asking for it. Yeah, if both guys are asking for it. And there's no belt that you have to worry about the yeah. sanctity of your title or the division. The question though is, would GSP ask for it after the after belt? The loss? Then it's not special, right? Then it's not. If that's what it takes for him to get up for the moment, because if he thinks, well, I can't ask the UFC to give me twenty million dollars if there's no belt on the yeah, line, yeah. you know, when it's just a co-main event. Or something. Think of Gaethje just like rip through Habib and like around GSP. Be like, I was never going to go to lightweight. What are you talking yeah, about? That was a stupid idea. <laughs> I was never going there. That was a stupid idea. That was, that was the media. That, that was a stupid media thing. <laughs> that they was probably up. that John Morgan guy. 
All right, let's talk about this weekend. USC on ESPN Plus 31. You'll be there uh, to cover the action. I will not. I'll just be watching on TV. That doesn't mean that there won't be an and a half over at patreon.com slash they made roadshow because there will be because that's how we roll. Uh, but I'll just be watching it on TV as a fan. But uh, Derek Brunson versus Edmund Shabazian is your main event. Key to uh, note if, if, if it had slipped by you, it's a three-round main event, not a five-round main event, of course. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, they were, they were preparing for the co-main, and then on short notice they got bumped up to the main. UFC decided we'll leave this as three rounds. I think that's fair, especially during the pandemic era. Man, to add an extra couple rounds is tough. Um, I will say this about this: is it? I'm, <laughs> I think it is. I'll tell you this: I'm, a, I'm, I'm intrigued by this fight, and I could see some people saying, "Ah, what do I care about this fight?" Um, I'm gonna tell you right now: I believe Edmund Shabazzian is the real deal, man. I really, really do. I've been impressed by him from day one, uh, earning his way to the UFC on the Contender Series, and, and I like what he's done in all his victories since. Of course, he had the split decision against Darren Stewart to start out, but since then, by the way, three straight first round stoppages. Kid has some skills. He's 22 years old. He's the real deal, man. I, I believe this buck. guy. You know, he's in a division that it's hard to say, you know, future champion. But at the same time, he's going to outlast a lot of those top contenders right yeah. now. So he's got he's got a window. Um, but he's got the undefeated record, and, and I think he is the real deal. Um, but Derek Brunson, the veteran, you know what I mean? The guy that's been there, done that, certainly isn't going to buy in any hype, certainly is going to be able to uh, adjust on the fly to, to life in the pandemic era, to competition in the pandemic era. Um, you know, he, he's seen everything. Uh, you know, certainly didn't go his way against, uh, the, you know, the, the top-level guys like Adesanya, but it's still he's had an opportunity to prepare for people like that um, and, and to get ready for people like that. So I believe that, uh, that, that Shabazian is the right pick here. I will say, um, I mean, uh, Brunson at plus 280 is not a not – a, I don't want to say it's not a terrible play because I believe Shabazian's, you know, kind of a next-level cat. But, you know, with these young guys, you never know if there's going to be a moment where they kind of freeze up or they slip up or they have an off night, you know, one of those nights. You know, other than Habib never going to made off, right? Nobody stays undefeated forever. So, you know, when's those off nights going to be? You know, if I could get – the, the the I basically I think that's what you're betting. If you if you want to throw a plus two eighty flyer on there, I think you're you're taking a plus two eighty flyer that this is the night that Edmund has an off night. Because I don't think if they're yeah. both at a hundred percent you favor Brunson over Shabazian. Uh and that's no disrespect to Derek Brunson. I just honestly believe Shabazian um, has kind of some next level talent, has some great things ahead of him. So uh, I'm excited for this main event. I can understand if some people aren't intrigued or what have you, um, but I think this is one to pay attention to. And let me say, by the way, I love the fact that Shabazian is managed by Ronda Rousey, yeah. but has never really, that's never really been like a central focus. Like everybody's known, but it's never really been like a big central focus or story. Now I get it. A lot of people hate Ronda Rousey at this point, so maybe it wouldn't be a good thing. But I just don't feel like he's tried to rest on those laurels to get yeah. opportunities that he doesn't deserve. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm excited for this kid, man. I honestly do believe he's uh, he's the real deal. Yeah. He certainly has never, you know, sort of touted as more of the media making a big issue of it. You know, oh, what has Ronda said about this? What were Ronda's key words that she gave you for this fight? And he's like, I don't really talk to her all that often. You know, they'll talk, they get some little career talks every once in a while. Uh, but people, you know, I think people don't give him enough credit for his head movement. <laughs> well done, sir. You're on a roll today, my man. You're on a roll. I just had to let that one marinate <laughs> yeah, for a had second to, in the air, man. Just had to let it sit for a second. <laughs> uh, but you're right. I mean, uh, there's something about this kid. He, he One, he takes a good punch, but he also delivers a good punch. Derek has a lot of power. Um, I just think Edmund, you know, like you said, if, if this is that fight where he's going to slip up, he's going to, you know, overstate things and just, you know, get careless in there. But I've yet to see that him do that. And all these fights that we've watched of him, um, I've never seen it. I haven't right. seen it. Doesn't mean it can't happen. Um, he's not going to go in there. He's not going to, you know, take Derek lightly. He's a super smart kid. This is another one where, um, I don't, don't want to pick on this coach, but, uh, Edmund is a pure talent, and I think that was the first one of the things that Ronda saw when she saw him when he was mm -hmm. just coming up, and, and good on converting those cats for 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 bringing this kid up. This kid is just a sponge. Everything that uh, you know, people have showed him, 
you know, whether it be wrestling, um, his striking, his jujitsu, he just takes it all in. And to be at such a young age, I just feel like the sky is the limit for this kid. And he has a great frame on him. He's he's got great size, and I still feel at his age that he's going to get bigger. He's gonna he's gonna grow. Um, at some point, you know, we're gonna see him stepping into light heavyweight. You know, at you know whether that be after Certainly he takes possible. a loss or someday. Yeah. I just think right now he's got a lot of room on his frame. Not that 185 is any sort of a hard cut for him. I could see where some people would, could say, man, if he could just shed an extra 15 pounds, he would be a huge welterweight and would just Ooh. destroy. But that's a lot. That's, of, a, that's lot. a lot of weight <laughs> to, to go down. I'm sure if you told him that, he'd be like, like, sir, <laughs> sir. You're mm. funny, but he would say it in just a few words. <laughs> it is, he is so quiet, man. He is the quietest. I, it's I, like pulling teeth. It's like, come on, bro. You Like, you're a badass. Like, give me yeah. a little extra. Like, it, be a little bold. Say it, something. Talk it is shit. funny, man. You know, he's he's uh, he's he's got that golden boy nickname, but he doesn't really, you know, have that golden boy swagger, man. He's he's very but I calm. Think that's but, what, I think but that's I like, what I like about. I know him. I like about him too, man. He's uh, he's just a very humble, kind of yeah. down to earth, respectful kid. So um, young, man. He is he's a kid. He's literally he, a kid. I understand we're old men, but he's he a could kid. be my kid. He could be my kid. He Absolutely. could literally be my kid. Hundred percent could be my kid. Unreal. He is so, he is so super talented, and and I'm not taking anything away from Derek because Derek is the kind of cat that with that power in his hands, if he doesn't get too emotional, if he doesn't get too caught up in the moment where, you know, we've seen in the past where it felt like maybe uh, you know some of his last fights that maybe just felt like the losses came because he got maybe a little bit too overconfident, you know, and maybe just didn't give his credit, uh, di give credit to his opponents. This is one of those ones where um, that could happen again. If he goes in thinking that, oh, my opponent doesn't have power, my opponent's not going to hurt me if I get it to the ground, this is one of those guys where you don't want to, don't let the age of this cat um, confuse you because 6'2", he's got a 74-inch reach, 22 22. He's so young, man. This kid is is something. Yeah, and, if uh, Brunson, I think if Brunson is going to win this fight, it's he, it's going to be uh, it's going to be ugly. It's going to be trying to control in that small cage, keeping things tight, working in the yeah, clinch, that sort of thing. You know, hurt him in the clinch. Uh, he, he, but we've he, never seen anybody hurt him in the clinch. No, you don't want to see that. Anymore. So <laughs> I, I I'm I'm excited for this. Keep if you haven't been watching Shabazian seriously, uh, take take a look at him, man. I I, I really do think he's got some next level talent. Uh, Joanne Calderwood, uh, Jennifer Maya, the the mm. late replacement into the uh, co-main event and also the uh, <coughs> feature fight of the event. <laughs> <laughs> kind of by default, but still. By default. <laughs> uh, but, but still, uh, listen, man, all respect in the world for Joanne Calderwood for taking this fight because she had a title fight lined up. Yeah. Um, I think it goes to show you, if, if, if you want to read between the lines here, um, you know, I, th I think it goes to show you that probably nobody knows exactly when Valentina Shevchenko is going to be back because I'm telling you right now, uh, Joanne Calderwood would not be taking a fight if it turned out that, uh, yeah, uh, Valentina looks like she'll be back in about uh, two months. You would wait two months. You would if wait. You, but yeah. But if you don't know, if you're not, if it's not clear, then this is the right thing to do. You know, stay active, stay busy. Um, but listen, you know, stylistically, this is a potentially difficult matchup for her. And uh, I think she deserves a lot of credit. I mean, not not to take anything away from Jennifer Maya, but uh, man, I, I think Calderwood deserves a lot of credit for having that title fight lined up and saying, "I will, I will, I will step up and I will move into this position." And again, reading between the lines, I think it shows us that um, Valentina is probably going to be out a little bit longer than we thought. Yeah, I mean, I I think what you're right. I mean, because. We've seen people that have said that, you know, it's one thing to say, I'd rather stay active, I'd rather stay active. But you risk so much in wanting to stay active. I think if JoJo didn't feel that she had a good step up on her opponent, I wonder if she still would have, mm -hmm. you know, taken it. Um, but uh, credit to her, um, you know, it's funny because Maya's like, well, obviously if she was going to fight for the title, if I win, I should get the next title shot. It's like, mm, it doesn't quite work like that. <laughs> maybe not so much maybe not so much but uh uh i i love jojo huge huge fan she's just so fun she's like one, literally probably one of the nicest people in, in the world mm -hmm. and nothing against jennifer at, at all but you know it's jojo's just one of those ones that you just kind of always sort of pull for because she's she wears her heart on her sleeve she's always got a smile she's just fun to be around on fight week so uh you know definitely you know hoping that we get a good good fight action out of it but yeah clearly the mm -mm fight of the card uh, easily, even though, I don't know, uh, Ed Herman and 
Burchard, you know, that's 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 a close second. That's a close second. Oh, uh, cold coffee, just always treading on thin ice. Uh, all right, Randy Brown versus Vicente Luque. Could be a fun fight as well. Vicente Luque, kind of the perennially underrated guy, man, yeah. that's, uh, man, you know, been on quite the run. and and, and uh, Yeah, he has. But really. meanwhile, Randy Brown, dangerous. I mean, he's got that crazy body type, that crazy – you talk about frames, man. That dude's got uh, crazy frames. Well, that, that could be a fun fight there as well. Um, Bobby Green versus Lando Venata, the rematch Hands there. down, probably the MMA junkie favorite well, of the night. Well, listen, I was going to say, we, I don't have uh, much audio this week, you know, because I was on furlough, so I didn't do any interviews. Um, but in the course of the media day today, <laughs> um, Bobby Green just launched – uh, into uh, a bit of a, a bit of a quote, and, and, and it was so deep, it was so profound, it was so just spot on accurate that I feel like I would be doing the listeners a disservice if I did not allow especially them. Especially if you have not yet voted. Especially if you're not yet voted for the World MMA Awards, uh, I would. I feel like I would be doing a disservice if I didn't play this nugget from Bobby Green. Um, <laughs> first of all, I want to say shout out to MMA Junkie, Beth coverage the best guys i know out there mma junkie the best guys that's the best questions there's some great work mma junkie i mean listen you don't argue with bobby green i mean the man nope. is just out there dropping knowledge dropping facts and uh like i said i mean clearly don't take it from us <laughs> don't take it from us Sir, I mean, take would, it from a professional we're, we're not that kind of people we're not gonna sit here and just brag about it that would be that would be wrong but when somebody else is willing to step up to the plate as, as a professional and tell you that Please go to worldmmaawards.com and vote for us. Just if you just want to throw a vote my way as well. Oh yeah, I mean, while, you're right. at, while you're there, I while mean, you're there, just throw a vote my way as well. I mean, you uh, take it from a professional. <laughs> the man said it. Uh, should be a good Thank fight, you, by the way, too, man. The mail. Those guys. <laughs> Uh, that should be a fun fight. Trevin Giles versus Kevin Holland. Uh, That's love awesome Kevin fight. Holland, man. Yeah. I, 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 big. I'm in. I'm all in on Big Mouth, dude. I, he's entertainment to me, man. He's, yeah. he's pure entertainment value. And that's no disrespect to Trevin Giles either, man. Uh, nah, he's a badass. Tre as Trevin's well. a, a good dude, obviously. <laughs> Uh, law officer as well, so I mean he, he deserves all the respect in the world. But I love me some Kevin Holland, man. I, I, I love the entertainment value. And again, like this this card, I understand why this may be one. Look, if if you don't want to watch it live because you got some other things going on on, on Saturday night, I get it. Uh, other sports are back, so you've been missing your other sports and you and, and, and you don't want to watch it live. I get it, but I promise you, there's going to be some highlights. So make sure you cruise yeah. over to MMA Junkie, get you some results. Maybe maybe refresh that play by play to just see what's mm. going on, and then you can figure out which uh, which fights you want to go to ESPN. That's the great thing about ESPN Plus, right? This is all on ESPN Plus, so you can just pull it up whenever you want. You know, watch it uh, on demand, kind of whatever you want. Uh, Jonathan Martinez versus Frankie Signs. Love both those guys, especially love uh, Jonathan Martinez. No disrespect to Frankie. The only reason I like Jonathan Martinez is a little bit more is because he's so uncomfortable when he has to talk to media. <laughs> it, it makes me laugh. It, uh, I, I like Frankie a lot, too. He's a good dude and a hardworking cat, uh, but I've never seen any – I mean, Jonathan Martinez, uh, like, you know, makes Hannah Cyphers look like Conor McGregor. You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> like just – I mean, just hilarious how much he gets afraid. You mentioned it, Ed Herman versus Joe Mearshart. I mean, that's oh, runner up for the mm, mm, <laughs> fight of the night. That's that's going to be some grinders in that there. That is doing an that awesome. Thing. That's an awesome fight. Somebody's going to get knocked out in that fight. It's going to be. I good. hope I don't jinx it. That somebody's going to get knocked out in that fight. I like it. I'm Ray Ray Borg is in there versus Nate. Uh, I mean, that's, it's a. Uh, Good to see Ray Borg always back in there. I know. I, yeah. I know people hate on Ray Borg. I like Ray Borg. I know people. How can you poop, hate on Ray Borg? Put people poop on him all the time for the weight miss and that sort of thing. But he's back in there. It's uh, a family man trying to take care of his family, doing what he's doing. That's it. Marcus Perez, not quite the Verdun face, but uh, yeah, the Joker face as well. Thank <laughs> you. I think it was Mark Fellows, uh, by the way, over at Patreon, was like, "Hey, the next mask you do, do the uh, Marcus Perez uh, full <laughs> Joker mask." Uh, against Eric Spicy, who I like Eric Spicy, man. Yeah. He's a funny dude. Uh, we've run into him a, 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 a couple times over the years when he used to do a little little Vegas. And I think I remember we, we – I think if I remember one night, me and you were in Brazil, and he was at the same steakhouse we were, and we didn't see him, and he thought, like, we were disrespecting him by, like, not, not, like, not, not saying it. Yeah, and I was like – Because I think he was trying to get our attention. I think but, he was. But we were, nobody can get my attention in a bro, steakhouse. in a Brazilian steakhouse, no, cold coffee dumb. ain't looking anywhere but, the, but at dumb. the gauchos, bro. I, mean, I remember one time, I think we were even there with, like uh, – I remember we were there for the I remember – I think one time I went to a Brazilian steakhouse, and I think even at our table, it was a big bunch of staff. Uh, there was, like, we had ring girls – and everything it was like I had to remember after the fact that they were there because once meat <laughs> once meat on a stick comes by, it's game over, dog. It's game uh, over. So no, no offense to, to to Spice. I do remember him busting our balls about that. I do remember he was like, "Why'd you disrespect me?" You're like, "Bro, 
<laughs> it's it's meat. It's pe- we got some picanha, son. There's no disrespect. Uh, it's picanha. The boy, those were back in the days when we were going to Brazil all the time. We were getting like those one dollar uh, liter bottles of original, man. Like, uh, those, missed, were the those were the days. I miss those. Those were days. Those days. Uh, Jamal Emmer versus Team Revalia. Uh, so I heard some rumblings that Team. Uh, we're recording this on Thursday night as we always do. I heard some rumors that uh, Timor might actually be out of this fight. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there, so don't hold me to that. Uh, but I heard there may be some, some stuff happening there. Uh, I think one of our reporters, the staff, was kind of on top of a potential change there. So if that changes, don't be surprised. And Cody Durbin makes his debut against Chris Gutierrez. So, uh, again, I get it, especially amidst all the other sports that are back for as long as they're back. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I get it. Uh, you may you may not be tuned into this one, but I, I think we're going to have some fun. I'll just be watching on TV as a fan, and uh, you'll be you'll be you'll be doing, handling all yeah. the, all the coverage. It, it'll be it'll be uh, old, old first question cold coffee. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> I try to put that off on hot tea half the time. Hot tea. Yeah, I'm hot like tea I'm like go on dog, first. just get it started because everybody expects that I'm going to be John Morgan when John Morgan's. I'm like I don't want to be John Morgan. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> I was like, if I'm there and I have to be, of course I'll take the first question. But if I don't have to be, I'm like, dude, just start. I was just like, pass the baton to hot tea, huh? Yeah. I mean, well, half the time, too, because while the fight happens, usually in a lot of these fights, once we get deep into the card, I'm editing, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. so I'm glancing up at the TV. So, you know, you know, I just feel like a jerk when, like, if I haven't watched your fight and then it's like, okay, well, you need to be the first question. I'm like, bro, I didn't see your fight. It's like, Tell me about your fight. How did you feel? <laughs> so, so when you hear that question that come out on fight night, that's because I didn't see the fight. <laughs> I didn't see much well, fight. I mean, in fairness, Hot T does work for the World MMA Award nominated The Mac Life. Yeah, so, I, I mean, mean, he's, he's turning it over to a fellow award nominated uh, journalist. It's, I'm just doing the fans a favor. I'm just doing the fans the favor. That's awesome. Well, listen, it's good to be back uh, in Vegas. It's good to be back with you, Cold Coffee. It's been too long, but uh, we're going to be doing a lot, <laughs> talking a lot of fights. Yeah. It's going to be a busy as hell August. I'll, I'll set I'll set some pillows over here on the couch. You can just take your spot and just stay here because we'll be here every week nonstop. Hey, you know what, though? I'm not going to lie. I can't complain. Dude. I love it. The, the fact that we're going to get fights in our backyard. We don't even have to travel, and we get fights Every Tuesday and every Saturday, yeah. it's pretty fun, man. It's a lot of tests. We're doing a lot of swab we're doing, tests. <laughs> we're doing a lot we're of COVID tests. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. In, in terms of people that don't have top secret security clearance, yeah. we got to be up at the top of the list. I'm telling you, 17 for me. Wow, 17 for me. Did so another far. one today, but it was it was it was easy. It was easy peasy. Uh, it's so funny when you start getting enough tests, you start to, you start to rate them on their, their <laughs> techniques you're like today was very very gentle it's very i was like it wasn't even like uncomfortable I, I was wondering i was like did i miss this bro i was like did i miss this the test? first <laughs> test we got when we got to fight island you know i mean we've taken this flight we yeah. go over there like everybody's in hazmat suits and stuff i mean it's so intense like we walk in the door and they spray us down like they're i mean they're literally just spraying us physically with stuff and i'm like i'm telling everybody like don't think about it like just don't even think <laughs> about it just don't even just don't think about what they might be spraying us with you know spraying us down and then we get in there to take the test and they're like, uh, do you want the throat? Do you want the nasal? I'm like, well, it, oh, you're only psychopaths pick the nasal. Let's so all yeah. take the throat. Dude, the first one, this chick jabs it down my throat. And I'm like, oh, like just horrible. Wow. And then switches to the other side and jabs it there again. And I was like, oh. So, like, wow. I'm like, it, and it was funny because I was the first out of the media people to go. And, like, you could see they were looking like, oh, God. I was like, that's yeah, <laughs> a little more aggressive here, dude. I was like, do you think it's a little different? So she gagged me twice, man. I was like, oh, my God. Do I have to put up with this for the next three weeks? Wow. But sure enough, as you said, it's you know, some people have better technique than yeah. others. If, they, if technique they get to that spot, you know, but whatever. Yeah, we're getting the tested the heck out of us. At the end of this month, I'll be I'll be sick of it. I'll right. be sick of it. It's going to be nuts. It's uh. Yeah, you know, but hey, it's good to have fights again. It's good uh, to have fights again. It's good to be back with you, Cold Coffee. It's good to have the Frosty. We'll see, if the, we'll see if the fans appreciate it, if, there, if our listeners are glad that I'm back. But <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to hit us up on Twitter. Hit us up on Patreon.com slash Inmate Roach. Let us know if, uh, if Cold Coffee. <laughs> I'm just rusty. If it, if it turns I'm just out, rusty. Yeah, yeah, maybe it turns out that uh, we'll be at the uh, – palatial grounds of, of, of hot tea from now on. <laughs> I don't know if he has any palatial grounds. <laughs> no, his grounds there. aren't palatial, bro. I tell you that, man. He's still on that grind. He's on the way up. They're not quite palatial, man. <laughs> so, uh, be sure to let us know if you're happy to have cold coffee. In the meantime, thanks for listening.
Listening? For what? Listening? There it is. Thanks for listening. <laughs>